start when I have this bit of equipment or when I finish this course or whatever kind of your journey is, then you would just never do it. And it's funny you say that because like for photography, I mean, I guess it goes with any industry. It would be the same with sewing machines as well. You'd have your different, but I mean, with photography, you can buy like a beginner level camera all the way up Mm -hmm. to, you know, cameras that are 20, 30,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to get caught up in that and think, well, I can't be professional if I don't have that. But actually, so much of it is your skill set as well. So admittedly, yeah. now I have much better camera equipment than I did when I started. I've, my stuff now is kind of middle of the road. So it, it's, it's very professional, but it's not, you know, the really high end stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I have noticed a difference in certain areas. For example, if I'm shooting in low light, my cameras now will be a lot sharper and a better picture quality in certain conditions and things like that. But most of the improvement I notice in my own work is from getting out there and actually doing things. And my experience, and a lot of it for me too, isn't just the picture quality, but it's learning how to work with people. And it's probably the same for yourself. You said about getting the mannequins and actually being able to measure and thing and getting more accurate with kind of giving people what they want. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit more about your background? So you said um, your parents are African, but you were born in Paris. And that sort of your African Congolese culture is what... um, I guess, gives you the inspiration for these really bright, bright colors and bold patterns. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes. So both my parents are from Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and they came in France before I was born. So I was born in France and I grew up in France. I've never been in Africa in my entire life, but I grew up in an African family. My parents were talking to me in Congolese. So I speak Congolese, but with a French accent. <laughs> so Balancine speaks three languages, which makes me feel really dumb because that is amazing. I can speak English, I suppose, and um, I'm learning bits of Scottish and I'm learning, um, and I do know some French as well, but not enough to be fluent. So three languages, amazing. Yeah, and I've just lived in an African home. So I eat Congolese, I listen to Congolese music, I dance on Congolese music because I love Congolese music. Um, And for me, I am Congolese, but I was born in France and I grew up in France and I think like a French person, so I am French. I have both cultures. And this is why I say that I have an African-inspired clothing line because my clothes are not too traditional that it would be costume on a Scottish person, for example, but it is a like skirts that you would wear anywhere, but the fabric is African. So I mix both cultures because this is me, (laughs) basically. And I think that's really amazing when you work in a creative job and you can find ways to incorporate bits of you, whether that's your culture, whether that's your background. And obviously, you know, the, the French side of you might make you think a certain way. And we all think of especially Parisian people as quite fashionable. It's, you know, the fashion capital. So you've got that fashion side and then you've also got the Congolese um influence as well in what you're doing. So I think it's really neat that you've, melded together all these different aspects of you and what's important to you yes because i believe that in any in anything that you do you have to be you people like authentic people and for me i am french and i am congolese i am both and i am living in scotland now so i'm starting to be scottish (laughs) (laughs) but you have to be you and this is what i'm trying to do with my brand I am a very joyful person. I like to laugh. I love I love colors. I love life. And this is what I want to, you know, share with my brand and with, and with my clothes. And one thing that I am I am absolutely grateful for is that my customers when they give me feedbacks, they are happy. They are like, "Oh, I'm not used to wear colors, but when I bought your thing, I'm very happy. I'm trying something new and it's it's good for me and this is good feedback for me because my joy and you know I love people as well so if people are satisfied I am satisfied (laughs) that's so true it means so much I always find it really tough if say I send off a set of photos and I don't hear back from somebody I'm still that person however many years into doing this that sits there and goes 
oh no, I hope they didn't, you know, I hope they didn't dislike what they got. And I always kind of sit on edge until I hear back and I get that feedback. Because really, as much as you might love creating, it's more than just creating for the sake of creating. You do want to get that response. You want to make a difference in somebody's day or in somebody's yeah, life. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, every, each of my products is like a part of me. It's like a baby for me. And when somebody receives it and loves it, it's like, I'm very, I'm just happy. I'm happy that that person loves it. And I'm happy that I met their day just with clothing. And I hope that I can share my joy and my culture through my clothing line. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you, not convince, because that's not the right word, but if you have people that maybe do tend to wear quite muted colors shall we say lots of kind of neutral colors and maybe they love the idea of being a little bit more colorful but they're a little unsure about it what would you say to them or how would you sort of encourage them to to try something different i would just say try (laughs) so for example there is a a few pictures that i just did lately uh with a wonderful woman which is also a small a business owner, uh, her name is Claire, and her business is um, pop, pop-up jewelry, I think. And I asked her to model for me. And she was like, usually I don't wear, you know, girls' clothing, like dresses, skirts, this is not my thing because I'm always working and I'm always with dirt, so I, I don't bother. And I just said, please, can you do it for me? And she said, yes, but she's not used to color and she's not used to dress and, and skirts and whatever. And so she tried and, I, and she was a bit um, anxious because she didn't thought that it would suit her or that she would, you know, be comfortable in my clothes. But when she put the dress, the skirts on, she was like, wow, this is beautiful. And I never thought that it would suit me, but it's beautiful. And then we started to, how to say that? What I want, what I want is to make people try something new and I want them to be comfortable with that so I will not put any pressure or push any customer try 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 not that way but I would be like you should try this you should look at you, yourself with that and we, we can you know style it this way or that way and I will I want to have a, convers- a conversation with the person and uh, just see their feedback and if they like it or not and for her for example it was not her thing at all, but she loved it. And the pictures were bombed because she loved what she was doing, you know. And I was even more happy because she's not some, it's not something that she's used to do. But she just was happy to do it. And she discovered that, yeah, I could wear that, actually. So if I, if I want to, you know, advise someone that wants to try something new, the only thing to do is to try. And if you don't like it, it is fine. There is no pressure. But if you never try, you will never know. (laughs) That is really true. And I think sometimes with things like whether it's clothing or accessories or shoes or whatever it is, sometimes you do just need to put it on. And the way that that can make you feel, that can be quite a powerful experience as well. Especially, as you say, if it's not something, whether you don't normally do like skirts and dresses or you don't normally wear color, I can see that being quite an empowering thing. Just putting on something really bold and going, actually, that makes me feel bold as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is what, you know, even like in any day life, everyday life, when I have my PJs on, I don't feel empowered. But when I put some makeup on, I do my hair, I put some nice clothes, I'm like, okay, okay. (laughs) So this is the feeling I want for my customers. This is exactly what I want to share with them. And I think the way that you've done it is really good. So you had mentioned earlier how you spoke to some colleagues at work um, and they had mentioned to you that maybe if um, if somebody was feeling a little bit concerned about a really colorful dress or skirt, maybe start small, maybe start with accessories. So that's great that you've you've kind of put that out and that's a good way maybe for some people to test the waters if they're feeling really unsure so you throw on like a hairband or if it's a, a guy I think you said you've done ties or whatever bow ties yeah that's really cool because then you get a pop of color and then maybe from there you can branch out and be a bit braver and go into the full the full outfit 
Absolutely. I had a few, a few customers who started with just a headband and she was like, actually, I love it so much. I think I'm going to order a dress or a skirt. And I was like, yes, please do. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, so yeah. How do you find, um, so you've been here three years now, is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And how how have you found your business has grown during that time? So you mentioned networking before. Has that been a really good source for you? Has it been more getting out to the markets, working on kind of social media and website? What kind of things have helped you grow? Everything that you just said. That, so I started with net, so I started with having a social media page because for me it was the basic. People need to see my products. And I asked my friends to model for me because they are Scottish people. So people can uh, relate and see how it looks on them and think maybe it would look like, like this on me. So this is what I started to do. Um, then I had my websites um, and then I started to do a few of the networks I just, as I just said. And the markets, the markets were very great because it allowed me to see people and it allowed me to meet other small businesses and it allowed me just to have to be a bit more noticed and after that just being with that network this is how i'm getting to be to get known and then um lately i just um, i just started retailing my clothes in a boutique in glasgow oh um, wow huge deal <laughs> that's great uh, yes, it's a boutique in the West End, and sh the business owner, is, she's just very nice, and she has a lot of small businesses. I think there are more that, than 30 designers represented in her store, and I am one of them. So, <laughs> Oh, tell us. So I stay in the West End of Glasgow. Whereabouts is the shop? Uh, Princess Street. Oh, cool. Very good. <laughs> yeah, the boutique name is Atch. H A T C H at. I'll need to go check it out. Yes, do please do. You will be stunned because it's so beautiful. It's a cozy store, and you have my products. You have jewelry. You have uh, food like chocolates. You have cards. You have a lot of things in there, and everything is handmade by designers, local designers in the UK. So I am very, my kind of show. I'm very proud. <laughs> yeah, that's. <amazing. laughs> Oh, that's really good. And it's interesting because when I first came over here, I think I was focused a little bit more like I was working quite hard on building a website, as you say, trying to build up a social media account. I'd made some actual like print materials, you know, really old fashioned actually printing out flyers and business cards. And <laughs> um, I am kind of old fashioned like that. But I wasn't, I didn't really think of networking as a way to build up my business. I was thinking I'd quite like to meet some other small business owners and things like that, but it wasn't something that I really prioritized. And mm. actually it makes such a big difference and not just in the sense of bringing in physical business, but for me, mm. the inspiration and the motivation I get Absolutely. off other business owners. Absolutely. And even the sharing experiences and see that you are not alone. But because when you start a small business, it's not always super beautiful or it's not always going smoothly. And to have the experience of other people that, you know, overcame or did this way or that way, it can be helpful to have their tips to, in order to improve your own business. So this is very good. Very, very good. Um, I also was in contact with Business Gateway and with Princess Trust. So when I did the networking event, someone told me you should contact Business Gateway because they help small businesses. So I contacted them and they said, you should contact Princess Trust. So I contacted them as well <laughs> because they said it's nice for people um, between 18 and 30 years old. They help them start their business. And so I, I met with one uh, person from Princess Trust and I told her my business plan and what I wanted to do. I showed her a sample, one of my dresses, and she said, this is a great business idea, you should, you should continue. And they also gave me a grant, a fund for my business. And I also won an award from them, an award from Princess Trust. Uh, it was most promising uh, small business company or something like that. Oh, I was great. very proud. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, that's really cool. My mom, I went with the, the because I had the, we, um, I don't know how you call that in, in English, but. Like a certificate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with that.